Okay, I wanted to talk to you today about burying walls and opening them up. I have people asking me all the time if we can open up a burying wall. And the answer is yes, you can, but you have to do it right. So many people will just open up a wall and then they have structural problems. Um, this particular wall, they wanted to open up across here. And um, so what I did is I got an engineer involved because I wanted to know what size, like this beam up here, I wanted to know to make it the right size. I was going to do actually a bigger one. And he told me, no, you only need this one. This one is a nine and a half inch tall LVL. And an LVL is a, a engineered material that we use for beams in construction all the time. And sometimes you'll just put one. Most of the time you put two. And then sometimes we, we put three or four together to get the load rating that we need. In this particular case, we needed two. And then because of the span, we needed a midpoint bearing point. So this will be a post in the opening. And then you can see we had the engineer spec out these connections right here for all of the connections from the post to the beam. And so we have a post there, a post here, and a post here. Now, because this was a bearing wall, there's another wall in the basement right underneath it. And then, so that means that the bearing goes from the roof down through the floor and down to the basement. And when they were building the house, they put a concrete footing underneath the concrete floor. It's usually about 12 inches wide and maybe 10 inches deep. And that has rebar running through it. And that's where all the bearing goes to on a bearing wall. And so when we're opening up a space like this, then we have to make sure that the bearing continues down because a floor, a subfloor is hollow. If you look right here, you can see the hollow space in the floor. And so, so you can see down here that it's all hollow, but you see where that stud is sitting? right here. Now they didn't get the bearing wall quite lined up as you can see with the wall that was up here, but it's close enough because most of it's still bearing on it. And so that takes the bearing from the beam down through these studs to this bearing wall. And this actually is a beam right here because they have an opening that goes through. And then that load gets transferred over to the posts. And so each one of these posts that we put in is um, sitting on the bearing wall, and then it takes that bearing all the way down to the um, to the concrete and the footing that's underneath it. And so that's how you kind of do it. I mean, you you have you have to do it the right way, and you really should get an engineer involved if you're doing an opening that's as big like this. Now, if you're just putting a doorway in, then you can usually just put a header in, like a two by eight or two by ten header in the opening because it's only two and a half or three feet wide. But when you're doing something like this, it's gotta be engineered so you do it right. Don't ruin your house by winging it because what, you know, if this wasn't done right, the whole roof could cave in because this buried wall has the flat ceiling bearing on it and also has this vaulted ceiling coming down and bearing on it. And so you can imagine if you didn't do it right, what kind of problems you could create for yourself? You get a little snow load up there or something, and the whole thing would cave in on you. So let me know what you think. If this helps you out, if you're thinking of doing a bearing wall, let me know in the comments section, and I'll, I'll try to answer your questions. But thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to our channel, and then hit the like button. And if you hit the little bell, we'll be able to notify you the next time we set it uh, post another video.